Hi, I'm Mina Malik Hussain and you're watching The Coffee Table and today we're going to have a lot of fun! And I know I always say this, but you know it's true because today we're going to be talking to the two superstars of the music scene in Lahore these days. Ha, huh, for five years. <laughs> Something that they have caught me out on because they watch my show with great interest and avidity. So today on set we are welcoming Natasha Nurani and Zara Piracha who are the co-founders of the Lahore Music Meet! Hello. Hi. Welcome. Hey. Thank you so much. I'm very excited. Oh my I'm God. I'm so excited. Yes. Yes, indeed. You know, before we, we were planning this show, these guys have seen my other shows. And apparently in one of the shows, I talked about how the Lahore Music Meet has been on for three years. And then... But it's been on for... Yeah. How many? Surba Noor was for five? Like, for five years. For five. For five. Exactly. For five. And they're sending me these clips. They're like... Yeah. So let me just say, on national television, the Lahore Music Meet has been going on for five years. <laughs> Good job, we got it, it, it right. It feels like 10 though, it really feels like 10. It does. Really yes, does. yes. So you guys, uh, when you, like, look at what you guys made. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> happened. Wow. It's, it's nice. It's well, it, I, I, it's certainly nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it's it, we don't get to attend it. Yeah, that's true. Indeed, that's that's like, why we don't get it. It's like know? the worst dinner party ever. Literally, <sighs> you are the hostess times like thousand. It's like being at your own Valima, man. Most Ooh. of the time, because everyone's family comes, family comes, family comes, family comes for everything. Yeah, except in your Valima, you don't get to wear joggers. That's and it's true. annual. Nobody has annual Valima. <laughs> we have an annual Valima now. <laughs> so this is your annual Valima. So, uh, guys, tell me. Um, where did the germs for this idea come from? Um, we were both working in music for like at university together. So we were just working on stuff and um, both of us were working on research for Pakistani music in different fields. Okay. And so that so was in an academic way, in an academic way. That's how this kind of started. And so we came up with the idea to kind of take these models of like a Jaipur Lit Fest and like all of these other festivals mm. and symposiums that take place around the world and to utilize that to get research for our um, dissertations, for <laughs> our undergrad, and, in the, and simultaneously also talk about problems and issues mm. that we might have had um, as upcoming musicians or, you know, because we, we both practice music. So we wanted to, I think, tackle that. Mm. Right. Yeah. So that's a really sort of no? extremely humongous and ambitious project to take yeah. on. That, okay, let's gar garner some data for our theses, because we are ethnomusicians. So let's just organize a, a, a festival of music. Our middle name is Overkill. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but we didn't know it would turn into this, I think. Yeah, I really? didn't, yeah. at least. Yeah. Yeah. I had no idea. So you thought it would just be like a cute little indie festival? Which it was, I feel, to a certain degree. But yeah, not yeah. to grow into this. <laughs> so it's also interesting to me that both of you are girls and young ladies. <laughs> Thank you. And you are, um, what's the music? Is from the, from the look of it, from the shape of it, I think that music in Pakistan is very much a boys thing. By default, yeah, yeah for sure. Because a lot of, they're just a lot, lot, there are more dudes in it than girls. I think uh, it's easier for men to work with men. Yeah. So it would make sense for them to prefer working with men. Um, mm -hmm. But like, also, I think that uh, from a young age, I think men are more encouraged that, to take risks. And mm -hmm. being in the music industry is a hell of a risk. Yeah. So it makes sense, but also I wish it wasn't the case. True. Yeah. And and sort of now I'm sort of trying to kind of think one, I wonder about how it must have been really challenging for two young women to sort of be like, okay, um, we want to sort of now invite, like how many acts are there on average with the music meet? There's like a lot. So for, uh, first year, I think we were like 20. Yeah, 20, tw yeah. 20 artists and then we had about 20 sessions as well. Yeah. Right, wow. so 20 performances. Mm -hmm. And then uh, mm -hmm. because with Lahore Music Meet, uh, we have, Panel discussions, storytelling sessions, performances, master classes. Yeah. So over the past four editions, we've had about a hundred uh, performances and about you know a hundred and twenty sessions wow. of all of these things. So that's, it's yeah. That's an incredible amount of organization and planning and sort of chasing people. And then also being <laughs> girls who are doing it. Yeah. yeah. On many levels, uh, it's easier. And this is just kind of just what it's like. It's easier for mm. a guy to pick up the phone and be like, hey, bro, can you show up? <laughs> and then, you know, they'd be like, sure, let's do it. And then uh, on the other hand, there's like a girl calling and she's like, yeah, we're doing this and what's the scene? And like, how was that? Uh, it's probably better now, I presume, <laughs> because now y'all are like, <laughs> We've got the MC videos and posters that everybody knows about us now. But in the uh, very beginning, hmm. what was it like? 
Well, initially, like, because I'm more of the sound person mm. for LMM, uh, I think initially they were just like, oh, where's the sound guy? And I'm like, hey. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah. hey. Uh, but you know, the thing is that when I started telling them, I noticed that a lot of performers came up and they're just like, oh, sound wala guy, sound wala. And I'm like, uh. okay, here's what you need to do. First, I used to be like, hey, can I help you? No? And now I was like, nay, nay. Uh, this uh. is what you need to do. We need right. to start at this time. Yeah. So just do this right now. Yeah. So I think uh, it was really difficult in the beginning when you were like nicer about it. And, and also like you know what you're doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you get that? Yeah. As well? Oh, but you actually know how to work the equipment. Yeah, the, I did get that a lot. Mm. Uh, a lot of, uh, I don't want to name them, obviously some of them kind of didn't want to talk to me. Yeah, really? Uh -huh. I don't think they understood, like they were, they kind of talked through me mm. for the most part. So it's okay. I mean, uh, you what? have to break the idea as well <laughs> that yeah. women aren't going to be in this field. At some point, more and more are going to come and then hopefully, inshallah, soon it's going to be better. Yeah. 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 And I generally find that, um, and when, we, when you sort of put the music needs together, yeah. uh, what, do you, what do you have in mind? Like, um, do you have like, there's no theme, obviously, yeah. because there's just lots of things happening at the same time. Yeah. But do you sort of think about this really consciously that we need to have more women or we not want to have more representation from X province as opposed to Y province, you know, things like that. Because we are women, we are mm. like going to be able to like um, schedule and program and curate more women. That's something that we are naturally, I mm. guess, attuned mm. to. So we don't have to make a conscious effort right. to be feminist. Like it's very good, very good. It's there. <laughs> it's baseline. That's where we start You're thinking from. Thinking about it anyway. Exactly. Mm. So, um, so that's definitely there. But yeah. beyond that, even I think. Um, it's important for us to just make sure that we are representing also what has been active in the scene over the past year. Like, you know what okay. I mean? Like, hmm. so a lot of scouting, hmm. a lot of going through demos and applications, a lot of reaching out to people, making sure that we're engaging with hmm. different people on, um, you know, whatever topics they want to come up with or discuss. Yeah. So we do, we do have to like sit down and like curation is probably the most fun and the most hectic part. Yeah. of the of the entire program which is just literally deciding who gets to say what and what happens mm. and a lot of what we do is we just give people creative control i remember you um moderated a session in lmm 2015 i think in hall four some at least 80 kisat and ah, i did yeah, yeah. <laughs> does she not know anything about lmm what's happening <laughs> for five um yeah yeah you guys are just gonna i'm gonna end up a meme one day because i you love guys. it i love it but yeah so for example that oh i did but no because it was so much fun it didn't really register as like a thing and then great response i love it it's true <laughs> <Eject myself. laughs> but, eject button. Eject button. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it's definitely um, it's definitely something we have to consider, and um, yeah. But but in terms of uh, who we select and who we curate, it's not even about who's the best for mm -hmm. you know of that year. It's not like a battle, you yeah. know. It's not like no one's a winner at at the festival. The mm -hmm. idea is to make sure that a we're not repeating too many people. Okay. We can't yeah. get the same people on every mm -hmm. single year, no, even if they're putting out fantastic music every mm -hmm. year. We have to make sure that we're creating spaces for different types of musicians from yeah. different working backgrounds as well as, as that. Mm. It, we don't want anything to be dominant. So it's not yeah. like we have quotas, but we don't want any kind of theme to dominate, I guess. Mm. Mm. I think that's one of the reasons why the LMM is uh, doing so well, because there's something, for, and this is why I paused at LMM, because if you say LLM, the pill everybody minds a lot. Because yeah. These two. Yeah, these two. <laughs> don't say it in front of them. Yeah, guys, it's not a law degree. <laughs> it's a music degree. festival. <laughs> I have never said it. So I might not remember the years. That's true. That's fine. We'll I forgive remember you for the that. acronym. There we go. <laughs> but I think this is one of the reasons why LMM has been doing so well and has all has sort of only sort of in gaining popularity because there is something <laughs> for everyone. Yeah, I think you know I um, when I was when we started this out, the idea was that if I were a kid. Yeah. And I was getting into music. Yeah. Where would I want to go? What would I want to see? What are the kinds of things? Because yeah. all we had was like, for example, like I was fortunate to have like Indus music, whatever, you know. But then I never got to see the underground scene in Punjab. I was oh. from Karachi, oh. you know, and also like <laughs> what younger. What about the underground scene in Karachi? Young girl concerts not gonna happen, etc. Et yeah, a lot also of like, an introvert, so hmm. double whammy. Between permission and introversion. <laughs> yeah, I just never really got out much, so yeah. I just you know stuck to my own music scene at home. But I feel like if I went out more, I explored this a lot yeah. more, I would have made a lot more leaps and bounds myself at a younger age. Mm. So the idea is that, okay, if I were to come to this, uh, this is what I would see. How would I react? Okay, I would react positively. Mm. This is how I would see it. So I'm trying to appeal to the kid in me mm. 
so that I can make the festival a good learning experience that, you know. So, I mean, as far as, I don't know, that that was also what you had also considered, right? When yeah, absolutely. Our demographic in terms mm. of who we're actually targeting, we tell sponsors it's mm. 18 to 35, yeah. but it's actually everyone between the ages of 8 and 22. Yeah. This is true. Like, my kids go and they're all like, yeah. They're the, because th that's how you make fans. Your biggest, yeah, like, yeah. stands these days are people who are like, I remember what a hardcore fan I was at age 11. I used to have my slam yeah. books filled yeah. with like, you know, collages of like <laughs> Moody and whatever. And no shame, man, because no shame, professional yo. fangirl for even life. Now, yeah, yeah, even now. Even yeah. now, someone yeah, yeah, for yeah. Moody, like if I see them, I'll even be like, oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> but that's how it's supposed to be. That's how you kind of create that cu culture and that music yeah. ecosystem yeah. where, you know, you have to have a fan base that you develop. Quite right. So that's, that's why those are our target markets. Because yeah. if you want like fans for life, you start young. Yeah, you catch them young. Catch them young. We're, yeah. <laughs> we're going to take a very short break. They can come back in like one second. Stay with us. Hi, welcome back to The Coffee Table. I'm talking to Natasha Nurani and Zara Piracha, who are the co-founders of the Lahore Music Meet. And every time I say it, I do it with a fanfare. <laughs> because, you know, da 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 <laughs> As so, it should. We were talking about a fan base and sort of catching the kiddos early. Yes. So, I think it's really interesting what Zara said about not having access to a sort of a music scene when one was younger. And as a girl, it becomes sort of doubly hard to yeah. do that. So um, was that the same for you as well, I think? Uh, yeah. My first album was, like, was yeah. supposed to be called Mujhe Ijazat Nahi Milegi. So, I mean, <laughs> it's it's an anthem. Uh, yeah, because honestly, this, even like the gigs that I did go to at age 10, 11, I yeah. would drag my siblings or any older cousin with me to take me there. Mm. But it would always mm. end in a padda. Or something like, you know, there were reasons that our parents weren't sending us mm. to gigs. Like as really? much as I was like mm -hmm. angsty about it, I was like, fine. Because that space became dominated by mm. men. Like yeah, it's, right. it's just not yeah. a welcoming space for women or especially young girls. And even like, for example, musically, um, a lot of, of, you know, jamming with musicians ends up being me turned into a singer. And so, like, there's there's a lot of just polite, uh, I guess, very subtle uh, sexism also just mm. taking place inside mm. jam rooms, inside studios, mm. uh, and all of that, which, you know, I know Zara and I kind of bonded over that during college as well. Yeah. Mm. And that's what kind of brought us together musically and all of that. Mm. So it it's definitely something that we're hoping to change with the festival. It's... Um, it's a family event is how yeah. we pitch it so yeah. that, you know, it, every, and it is because you see everyone mm. from, you know, uh, my grandmother is 85 and she has attended all of them. Uh, it's so much fun <laughs> meeting her there because she's like, you know, Kashmir was performing and my kids were rocking out in the front and Nano's like... Exactly. That's, that's <laughs> yeah. how it should be. That's that's the perfect, like, <laughs> combination. It is, isn't it? And so so I think we're hmm. hopefully trying with all of these things, to like with LMM at least, to make a space that is inclusive for all and where Ijazat yeah. issues don't exist. <laughs> and I think it is... Um, it becomes something that's really easy to access because it's at Alhamra, which is very, yeah. it's quite central yeah. to Lahore. It's free. Anybody can walk in. You can go with anybody. You could even go alone because it's pretty safe. Yeah. You know, it's in an enclosed a area. And because people, you're you're monitoring who's coming in. Mm. So, and it's, it's strange. You know, I think these are sort of these intangible things that just kind of happen by itself. Like, I've been to the festival every year and it never has a kind of, a scary vibe because sometimes you know you think about like you know like you said like you know you think of like underground music scenes and like smoky rooms and people are like jamming and smoking and it's like you know some sort of dodgy mahal but also terribly intriguing you know <laughs> you know what I'm saying you know these are like know, the stereotypes of musicians <laughs> which is why you don't get ijazat because yeah. you know your parents are like Beta? Like, what yeah, is yeah, this? Yeah. What are you? What is this sort of, you know, and then you're like hanging out in someone's basement, <laughs> just like, doo -doo -doo -doo. That's what we do before. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's everything now you're before grown the up. festival. Yep. Now you're grown up. But LMM, I think, has this really great, welcoming, happy vibe to it. Yeah. And I... I don't know. I don't. I think. I don't think I can ask you where does that come from. As <laughs> so I look in the bottle, you go spraying it on people. <laughs> well, I think it's just honestly. I feel really passionately about mm. music. I feel like music has given me so much. I need to give back to it as well. Ah. And I think you also feel the same way. You know, we both feel very strongly about, okay, it's not just about us and our egos and our music. Mm. This is about mm. music in general. Yeah. If we don't do something about this now, who is? Yeah. You know, because even like other festivals, they're doing great. I'm not saying mm. they're not. I just feel a little, dis I feel like they're a little disconnected from some of the music that is happening. 
-hmm. because they have a very strong idea of what music is. Whereas when we approach it, I we try extra hard to make sure we don't go in with the idea of what music is. We allow uh -huh. the music to speak for itself. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. we have a lot of artists on board that I I personally don't like the sound of. Yeah. I'm not into that genre, mm -hmm. but that doesn't mean they don't deserve to be there. They're yeah. very much Pakistani music, just like Kavali's are. Yeah. So this is one of the things that I think gives that inclusive vibe, the safe vibe, yeah. that everyone is welcome here because yeah. everyone is welcome there. Yeah, and music yeah. and sort of teetering towards cliche, but music yeah. is that one language which we all understand and it's a, it's a real yeah. equalizer because everybody can listen to, you know, like in the video, it was amazing because you have kavals and you have rock music and yeah. you have people who just sort of get up and start dancing. Yeah. It's, it's so much fun and everybody, all sorts of people can do that and nobody has ever sort of turned around and been like, yeah, yeah. Just don't do that. Yeah. Don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, I'm a sound person. <laughs> so, Natasha, you mentioned something about being sidelined as a vocalist because one is a woman. Mm. And that seeming to sort of be mu musically a, a woman's place is behind the mic, mm. singing. Yes. Prettily. Pretty. But not playing the instruments. And how important is it then to be as, as a female musician or female musician in this instance, um, to learn how to play. Like very, like Zara is a great example of yeah. that. Like it's just, she's been someone who has made sure to not get boxed into that mm. box. And that's why, you know, working with her has been great over the past like almost decade now yeah, that we've known each like other. Yeah, you a million things. Yeah. Right? Yeah, you're yeah, just yeah. like, do 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 <laughs> you know? Yeah, that's yeah. me basically, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly, so like it's, it's very important also for, Again, literally, it's just having someone to like, like Zara to look at, mm. as, like a young person can look at her and be like, oh, okay, we can do that. Because yeah. that's also just something that wasn't there maybe 15 years ago. Mm. How many female instrumentalist musicians were there really that, you know, existed beyond maybe like Hania or like three, four other people that, yeah. you know, were because, doing these uh, things. It's like you can, I can't, I can hardly think of anybody yeah. who you saw, any woman you saw with any instrument. Even a tambourine. Even a tambourine. Like Betty from the Archies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Betty from the Archies, exactly. Someone at that level. But it's um, it's really important for just everyone, young mm. girls, young boys, even to know that there are multiple options for them to take up. That there's not one. To be a musician is not mm. to take one career path. You don't have to look a certain way. You don't have to act a certain way. You don't need to go prettily into music videos and be like, hello. Yeah. You don't, yeah, you mm. don't need to be doing all of that. There is a... You, you are allowed to have a lot of ugliness in your art and your, you know, in your craft and your mm. musicianship and things like that. That should also be celebrated. Mm. And, um, and so, yeah, so I think it's very important for people to be able to see different options, which is why when we're curating at LMM, we, we make sure that there are different versions of people so that you can find yourself at LMM, right? Yeah, like you want to yeah. be able to identify with someone at a concert and be like, wow, I can be that in five years. Or like, yeah. I want to go home and I want to buy a guitar. Yeah. Or I want to go home and I want to be a, like a drummer now. Yeah. Or uh -huh. like, I want to be able to, you know, be yeah. able to play multiple instruments. Yeah. And so that's that's kind of what we're do doing. Where we, like LMM is basically a, a space where we give people entertainment. But really, we're just trying to inspire and like accidentally educate yeah. them you know, about things a like fuse, that. Yeah. Yeah. Literally, like, literally. You know, like a little dynamite <laughs> stick and they'd be like, Pagazam! So what do the master classes do? Is master that sort of kind of carrying on from this kind of art education kind of thing? Absolutely. I think yeah. it, what it does is with the master classes, I think what we're able to do is provide that music education to people, mm. but not like we're not gonna really be having sessions on say music theory or things right, like that are accessible, right. but we'd be focusing on certain softwares or kind of focusing on being able to allow a musician or an upcoming artist to DIY, to like be right. able to handle their own things and give them the tools and resources mm -hmm. that they can go home and continue learning as opposed to being yeah. like, here is class one, lesson yeah, one, yeah. take this home, go home and practice this. Yeah, yeah. So just like basic um, roadmaps for them to mm. be able to understand. We have that every, we have it for everything from songwriting to um, Ableton production to uh, bass management, synth, uh, yeah. synth mixing, mastering, mm. yeah. um, guitar once in a while, um, and, 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 and folk instruments. And just like, oh, so, so that's yeah. also important that mm. Western theory and instrumentation is obviously there, but mm. to really bring it under the ambit of Pakistani music, yes. I think it's also important to be yeah. focusing on local 
and indigenous instruments that should be very much normalized. Like it should mm. be as normal for someone to be playing a rabab as it is, ki achha, you know, you're playing the guitar. Yeah. yeah. So that's also kind of, I guess, what we're trying to do with the yeah. master classes. Yeah. But that's really valuable because a lot of um, a lot of folk instruments that are sort of, from what I understand, are sort of in danger of dying out because people don't play them anymore and then people mm. don't learn how to play them. Yeah. And then it's just going to be lost. Like that, that sound will be lost to yeah. us. So I think that's why like the masterclass becomes really important there also. Yeah. And then also sort of just, and again, like you said, like we are Pakistanis and we have this really rich and really diverse range of music. Yes. So we have these two directions. We have local, but we also have Western and we also have regional. So how do you guys reach out to regional um, musicians? I know it sounds like a cliche. Sometimes we just kind of wait for these things to come to us. Sometimes yeah. we don't know about these things. Yeah. We're just, honestly, because we're musicians, we're always looking at these things. Yeah. We start attending these things. These are our <laughs> interests, so we just automatically kind of, this comes to our attention. And yeah. then when that happens, then we look more into it, then we start going like, okay, this is something more people should know about. Mm -hmm. And I have this platform. Yeah. Maybe we can use this to bring attention to this particular thing. Right, and that's really important because you guys are practicing musicians. Mm. Uh, you guys are very much in the scene. Like you know what's happening. You sort of have literally your ear on the ground. You go to yeah. gigs. People talk to you. And then people also send demos to be part of the LMM. Yeah, for the outdoor stage, yes. Because we okay. started this in LMM uh, 2016. Yeah. 2016, we started that. Because... Um, we don't want to repeat the acts yeah. and there are a lot of people, a lot of egos get hurt. Uh, why aren't we part of this? Yeah, and you know, yeah. it's difficult to explain sometimes. We're just like, it's not that you're bad. It's not yeah. that... Or that we, we don't like your music. Yeah. That's not true. But egos get hurt. So we mm. were just like, okay, can everybody please go through this process? And yeah. it's very simple questions. Like, you know, oh, so uh, where do you want to be in five mm. years? And you can say something like, I just want to keep jamming. I just want to mm. be with my friends and jam on stage and be happy. Yeah. But you'd be surprised at the kind of applications we get even now. What are the best ones? Which are like the most like, outrageous ones you've ever got? Somebody's genre was male. <laughs> that was my favorite. <laughs> I'm a dude. Yeah. yeah. This is my music. This is my music. We literally, <laughs> under the genre thing, we have to write not gender, but genre, please. Like, we have to specify. Oh, wow. Yeah. And, and what are the sort of hopes and dreams that come out of this five year plan question? Sometimes quite a lot, sometimes like sometimes like TMI for us yeah. as well. But like it's it's also nice to know <laughs> what people want in five years. No, but tell me, I want a specific thing. Are we allowed to share data? Um, well, like, without me, a little bit. Okay. Like okay, so there was this one person who was talking about how uh, you know music has really helped him get out of this depressive spell he was okay, stuck wow, in. That's Very great. young person, mm -hmm. you know. So next to the application, uh, he's a very young kid and I don't think he's ready for the stage yet. Yeah. He's just kind of like in his room jamming. But like I need to send him a customized email later. You know, that's what yeah. that's the note I've written yeah. uh, because the kind of stuff he wrote was music is my only outlet and LMM is something that I really like and this is something that I want to attend. And my hope and dream is to one day come there and perform there. Exactly. That's why you need to send a customized email for that kid. You guys are so nice. You actually send customized emails to people sometimes. 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 <laughs> <laughs> See, this is where the heart comes in, you know, and, and somebody is being so open and saying that this is, you know, music is my lifeline and is it a tagline for something? Some show? I don't know, some music channel. Yeah, yes. yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes. yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, mm, that sounds familiar. Yeah. But, wow, that's amazing. I'm going to sort of Stay in this moment for a minute and we're going to go to a break. So we'll see you in like five seconds. Stay with us. Hello, welcome back to the coffee table. We're still talking to Natasha Nurani and Zara Piracha from the Her Music Meet. <laughs> I'm not going to stop doing that. <laughs> I love it. We need, we need this clip. You should have me to like MC you. Oh my God, yes. <laughs> so when we were off camera, we were talking about how you guys are musicians, but you also feel like you've had to sort of prove that you are musicians to be taken seriously by other musicians. So how is this? Like from what I think of it, from when I think of it, like um, you guys have been into music and you've been, you know, playing your instruments and singing and making your songs and just kind of been into your music for years and years. Mm. So sort of what was this like invisible Rubicon you had to cross to kind of become a proper musician? Like was there one? Weren't you just always just musicians? Uh, well, you know, 
I don't know about you, but like when I would tell people, oh, I play the guitar, mm. they're like, oh, acha. that's cute, you know? Yeah, like a hobby. Like it's like three chords and that's it, you know? Yeah. I, I didn't want to tell them, oh, but I, I do more than three chords. Yeah. I don't want to get into that because it also feels a little petty, so I don't. Mm. Uh, normally, I just play and then they're like, oh, okay, now we get it. The point is that I haven't played in a while. Yeah. Like I hadn't during LMM at least. Yeah. And um, when I started playing with Sekandar Kamandir, then people were like, okay, she does play. She can play. That's interesting. And she plays at, at par with the dudes in the band. <laughs> you know, yeah. Zala and she's like, doo, 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 and you're like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so they were like, okay, now we get it. Now she's she's one of us. You know, she's a musician. Mm. So that's mm. it's kind of nice being part of this. And... Um, but I mean, when I started doing biryani, then they're like, oh, she also produces, you know, ah. I don't know if it's necessarily um, a gender thing for them to know or not know that I do mm. these things because I'm also shy at the same time. Mm. There's also that. Yeah. But um, I do find that people are a lot better with me now that they know I do these things. So that's kind of nice. I like, like that. Excuse me. I have arrived. <laughs> I swear I know music. Exactly. Like I'm not, it's not just like a, a lady's hobby yeah, for me to yeah. be doing tin tin and not doing tin tin. And you're also like a sound engineer. Yeah. Like yeah. that's a lot of technical stuff going on. It is. It's it's actually very difficult to navigate through everything. Uh, but I think I enjoy being a musician more than a sound engineer with mm -hmm. uh, all the musicians around me. I, yeah. That's way more fun. I imagine because yeah. it, like what goes into sound engineering? Like what is that about though? First of all, you have to get everybody to the venue, to the stage, to set up. Um, <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then you go like, okay, what are your sound requirements? And yeah. they tell you and you go like, no, really, what are they? Because <laughs> they're always just like, like, oh, we forgot. We forgot to mention Falana, like this wire, yeah. that wire. Uh, this has happened a couple of times where like I asked this one person, okay, what are your sound requirements? They were yeah. like, oh, we just need two outs and that's mm. it. And I was like, but I've seen your setup and yeah. like, don't you need this and that? They're like, oh, right. Yeah, that. Yeah, we need that. Yeah. And I was like, oh, okay, thanks. <laughs> yeah, so I know more than you about your own requirements. They just forgot, I think, you know. Or do you think they don't pay that much attention because there's always a sound person to kind of fill in the blanks for them? I think they're just, they're just a little absent-minded sometimes. Mm. You know, I don't want to think too much about it. You know, I just want to yeah. get the show done. So uh, once they're done with that, then you get the levels right. You make sure that what they're going to play is going to sound good at their like highest or most energetic. Mm. So that the lows are also okay. Oh, so it's like a whole sort of balancing act. Situation. Oh yeah. Yo, yeah, and then we have to get them to start on time, then we have to get them to end on time. <laughs> That's also a task. I now. can imagine that, that would be really hard, especially for those outdoor performances where it's just, it's a much more kind of loosey-goosey vibe in the outdoor oh, yeah. uh, concerts and, you know, people will just kind of go and then audiences will yeah. be like, more, more, encore. We don't allow that. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's good that you think it's loosey-goosey because at least that means that the system is working because mm. over the past few years we've managed to at least musicians have now come to the LMM standard of actually keeping within time. We make sure that we have a space for like to accommodate for 20 minute delays or like 30 yeah. minute delays and yeah. things like that. So as long as you're being fooled, yeah. that's okay. Like, oh, it's so effortless. It's so effortless. So again, like the worst be. dinner party ever. The worst know? dinner party <laughs> like, ever. Kitchen is like a volcano. <laughs> yeah, but you have to come out and smile outside. and be like, hello, yeah. welcome to LMM. Yeah. How are you? We've but, got, tell me about my favorite, one of my favorite things about LLM are the jandis. Oh my god, they're so nice. They're the best. Who it puts went, them up? In the, uh, the volunteers and then eventually yeah. now the vendor valets do it. But yeah. Um, yeah, no, the first year we went and got these uh, these jandia, except yeah. no one knew the maypole situation that I had envisioned ah, in my mind. It would come out like and that. And everyone's like, what's the, what's the, what's yeah, happening? Like, what? And I was like, I don't know, I what can't Pinterest this, this enough. <laughs> and, um, but no, eventually we got it. The first two years it was a volunteer effort and we managed yeah. to make it out. But now it's become part of part of the LMM vibe because LMM is based off of all the melas that we attended growing ah. up and all of the kind of, especially in Lahore, we had Basant having, Basant was basically an excuse for just six, seven concerts a night, right? You'd be concert That's hopping true. and things like that. Yeah. Um, and just generally spring and just, there were lots of shows happening in the 90s and all these jhandiya basically just represent that. Yeah, the kind know. of festive springtime, happy vibe that we're all sort of going into. I really like that also idea. Also that we're that, low you know, key, we're low yeah, cost, you know, yeah. that's, I mean, we do have a free event. We, you know, uh, break even barely with sponsors uh, doing all of that. We don't pocket any of the money ourselves that's, at all. Huh. We're not salaried, yeah. unfortunately. So this is all like LMM <clears throat> is based on volunteer work. Yeah, we're the biggest volunteers at <laughs> LMM. Yes, <laughs> we are. 
That's what we politely call ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> For free, we yes. free will. Unpaid. Unpaid. No, but that really... Love. I think that... Exactly. I think that really speaks to the vibe of LMM. Yes. Is that it's all coming from the heart because you are doing it. Because I really like the idea that Okay, well, we don't have percent, but we've got yeah. music. Yeah, and, and it's and you don't do need that. to time it, right? Like it's not a although it's become like a seasonal thing where no. like it's winter, spring, cusp kind yeah. of timing. Yeah. But February is that. Yeah, too. but it, the idea is that everyone, all age groups, are welcome during the day and all the way till the evening because it starts at noon and then it goes on all day. So yeah. the yeah. vibe at the festival at every hour in every space within Alhamra mm. uh, is is different. Whatever Ooh. you're looking for yeah. is there. So if you're looking for like a dark electronic, you know, moody corner, you can have that as yeah. well. If you're looking for light, breezy, acoustic, indie, you mm. have that happening outside. If you want lots of food, you have that happening yeah, as well. Yeah. So if you want, you know, garam ban kebab, we offer those as well. Yeah. I hope this year. Yes. Inshallah. Yeah, inshallah. It's in our curation. Yeah. God, God willing. God willing, the headliner is ban kebab and yeah. Coke. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, yeah. So do you, do you find that you have some genres that do better than others or just kind of more or less even humans? I think that... Data. Uh, yeah, data. Like, I'm just like, hmm, how much can I reveal? Um, I think it's, it's mostly... Tukka, honestly, okay. it's about like there's some magic moments where mm. you find, you know, like a rapper in the afternoon and then there's a dance crew kind of like mm. having like a dance off happening very organically in front of him and things like that. So different genres do, uh, local genres definitely appeal more. So mm. if someone's singing in Urdu, I feel like that yeah. definitely engages uh, mm. with the audience a lot more. Yeah. But it, it really depends. Some some bands bring their own following and their mm. own kind of like, you know, groups, who, groupies who come to come see them and things like that. Um, but yeah, like Kavali was massive for us. But then it, like Taka Tuck, which is a progressive metal band that, you know, uh, opened for Free Day huh. last year. They had like a fully packed hall wow, one for them really? as well. Yeah. And you think it's such an unusual pairing that you have a metal band right before the kawals come on and yeah. hall one is still full. Hall and one is still one full. And is just like, yeah. And, and that's Amazing. kind of the concept, of, hmm. you know, the way we do our, our lineups is that we pair together artists that don't make sense. Like we mm -hmm. had Red Blood Cat, which is like a new jazz band, mm -hmm. uh, open for Maidhai, who's a, yeah. singi, a Sindhi folk artist. Mm -hmm. And... Um, so, you know, we, we try to mess with people's head and like <laughs> force them to listen beyond yeah. their genres because everyone's really deep. Ah, everyone's very stubborn in yeah. what they like and what they listen to. So this is kind of our way to mm. um, propel them into music discovery. And it's all Pakistani music. We don't get any international acts. Mm -hmm. We curate locally entirely. And that's so amazing that again, now in your <laughs> fifth year, you still have so much material and so yeah. many acts to choose from, which means that, you know, our music scene is thriving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this, and this is not just English or Urdu, but these are just across the board. Yes. Different regional, you know, different regional languages. And yeah. it's like, whoa, so that's really amazing. Really exciting, but now again, you guys are a, are, are are a sort of a women's team, and the artwork that LMM puts out, which is just fantastic, that is also done by this really cool woman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sana Nasser. Yeah, she's really great. She is in Karachi. She hasn't, you know, she started working with us in 2017. Mm -hmm. She hasn't been to the festival since she's been designing for it. I really hope she comes this yeah, year. Come, yeah, come, Sana Nasser, come to <laughs> LMM. <laughs> you know. See your, 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 See your artwork things. happen. Yeah. Oh, but it's so great. She's great, man. She's got, mm. she brings in a lot of design philosophy into it and a lot of what she does. Like, there's a lot of Easter eggs in each design. So even oh. if you look at 2017, yeah. 18, or 19, like, there are these tiny little, like, um, you know, things that she develops that also feed into the ethos of what we're doing with the festival. Yeah. So it's a very, very, like, beautiful way of representing and, like, because with the festival, we have to imagine the festival until it happens. So oh. this really helps that yeah, process yeah. because so visualize yeah. the vibe that you have going for it. And Absolutely. I really love like I think it was last year's uh, art where you had it was like a reference to a Mughal miniature with a rose. Yes. But the rose had like a mic cord yes. underneath yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Was, Ox cord. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Ox cord. Yeah. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> I'm like, that tar, you know. <laughs> and that, that was so clever because it's really speaking to our sort of ancient cultures. Yeah. But also like cool and fun yeah, yeah. I think no, I think she's perfected that yeah. like um, she's got this very 
South Asian, but very Pakistani kind of aesthetic that she yeah. develops and creates as well. Although this year's artwork really reminds me of Lisa Frank, and I love that. It really does. It's That's exactly it. Because I was looking at it, and yeah. there's so much going on, and also the jandis in the background. Yeah. Like, Yay! <laughs> homage to my favorite thing. <laughs> but yeah, and that kind of really like vibrant, kitschy, almost like late 80s cool vibe. Absolutely. Oh. LMM merch is the best. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, Yahoo! <laughs> but thank you so much, guys, for coming on the show. Oh, thank this you for having me. It was a fantastic us. conversation. Even thank though you. you, like, mercilessly teased me through most of it. Five. Just mercifully. <laughs> no, I said mercilessly. Mercifully teased me. For five. <laughs> <laughs> well, you guys, um, you know, thank you for all the good works that you are doing. Thank you. And sort of, you know, keep it up. <laughs> and we will see you guys at the LMM yes. in February. <laughs> first and second. First and second of February, you guys. This is where you heard it first. Well, not really because it's on Instagram as well. <laughs> but thank you guys for watching. And if you're watching this on YouTube, don't forget to like and subscribe. And do not forget in a few weeks to show up at the LMM and rock out. <laughs> thank you guys for watching. And we will see you next time on the coffee table. Bye now.